Hello everybody, welcome to Trans e-learning chemistry videos. Today we'll be discussing about test for acid radicals and in that we will be detecting the presence of halide ions. Uh, you can see here that I've taken three test tubes. This is test tube A where I have taken sodium chloride which is a clear solution. Uh, through this I will be detecting the presence of chloride ion. In test tube B, I have taken sodium bromide. Through this, I will detect the presence of bromide ion. And in test tube C, I have taken sodium iodide solution. This is also a clear solution. Through this, I will be detecting the presence of iodide ion. You must be wondering that why I have not taken sodium fluoride here. The answer of this I will give you within a few minutes. So before proceeding further, I would like to tell you the procedure for the test for the halide ions consists of two parts. One is the identification. And second is the conformation test. The identification test is conducted using acidified silver nitrate solution. Now, what is the need for acidifying the silver nitrate solution? This I'll tell you when I'll add few drops of dilute nitric acid. So, for the identification, the general equation is sodium halide and then I'll be adding few drops of silver nitrate acidified. This will give silver halide precipitate and sodium nitrate solution. The formation of different precipitates of silver halide uh, will detect the presence of respective halide ions. Now the confirmation test. You must be wondering what is the need for the confirmation test like if we are getting the uh, different color precipitates. The point for confirming is that sometimes the color of the precipitates are quite similar. So it's become difficult to distinguish between those colored precipitates. For that we need to do the confirmation test. The confirmation test is conducted using ammonia solution. We will be using either ammonia solution or concentrated ammonia solution. Now what is the need for uh, using the concentrated ammonia solution? This I will tell you as we move further in the procedures for confirmation. Now uh, the answer to that question why I have not taken sodium fluoride because the sodium fluoride will give no precipitate with silver nitrate solution. So if I react sodium fluoride and silver nitrate solution, the acetified one, it will form silver fluoride which is soluble. So this gets eliminated in the first step that the moment we add silver nitrate, if we get no precipitate, then it has to be fluoride ion. The difficulty arises when we get uh, different precipitates and that too are more or less similar color. First of all, we are adding few drops of dilute nitric acid to acidify the solution. The need for adding dilute nitric acid is that nitric acid reacts and removes other ions which can otherwise give a very confusing precipitate with silver nitrate solution. Thus definitely it would restrict the correct and appropriate detection of halide ions. So before adding few drops of silver nitrate solution, we need to add this dilute nitric acid to get the required halide ions. After adding few drops of nitric acid, we are adding few drops of silver nitrate solution. Now let's see what happens. You can see here that we have got three different precipitates. In test tube A, where there was uh, sodium chloride, now we have got white precipitate of silver chloride. And in test tube B, where there was earlier sodium bromide, which was a clear solution, we have got very pale creme 
precipitate. And in test tube C, where there was earlier sodium iodide, we have got very pale yellow precipitate. And now you can see here that the color of these precipitates are more or less same, like they are very confusing as such. So this is the reason we go for the confirmation test, so that we can confirm the presence of that particular respective ion and that particular solution. Now, how these precipitates are formed, what happened at the atomic level. So what we're going to do here, we're going to zoom in, in into the respective test tube and we'll see how these precipitates are formed at the atomic level. And after that, uh, we will be uh, conducting their confirmation test at the atomic level and then we'll zoom out from the same test tube so that we know what happened at the atomic level and how it appears at the surface level. So let's start. We'll be zooming it in the test tube A. We are zooming it into the test tube A and you can see here one molecule of sodium chloride which consists of positively charged sodium ion and negatively charged chloride ion and one molecule of silver nitrate uh, which consists of positively charged silver ion and negatively charged nitrate ion. Now for the sake of the convenience I have taken just one one molecule. In reality there will be millions of molecules which will react together to form the respective precipitate. Now as opposite ions react each other so silver and chloride ion will get attracted towards each other to form the precipitate of silver chloride. So let's see how this happens. You can see here that silver and chloride ions are combining with each other to form the white precipitate of silver chloride. This white colored precipitate what we saw at the surface level is the result of the formation of silver chloride at the atomic level. So on adding few drops of acidified silver nitrate solution to the sodium chloride solution the formation of white precipitate of silver chloride detects the presence of chloride ion. Now uh, it's time for the confirmation test for the chloride ion. For the confirmation test we will be adding few drops of ammonia solution here. So let's see what happens. You can see here two molecules of ammonia and then you can see that the silver ion detached from the chloride ion and it got attached to those two ammonia molecules forming a complex ion. The name of this complex ion is diamine. Silver ion. And the chloride ion is left alone. Now, as the silver ion has detached and it has moved and combined with the two ammonia molecules, this confirms that now the precipitate no longer exists because we don't have silver chloride. We are left over with diamine silver ion and chloride ion. How they appear uh, from the surface level? What kind of solution uh, now we have inside the test tube? For that we have to zoom out from the atomic level to see what's there now inside the test tube A. Before zooming out from this level, I would like to write the equations for their uh, detection as well as the confirmation test. First for the detection test, sodium chloride plus acidified silver nitrate solutions give silver chloride which is a white precipitate and sodium nitrate solution. We have just ignored this part because uh, it is of no concern to us. We are concerned with the detection of the respective halides. So that is why we are taking into consideration these precipitates. In the confirmation test, the silver chloride reacts with two molecules of ammonia to form diamine silver ion and chloride ion. Now zoom out and see what we have in the test tube A. So on zooming out we can see the clear solution 
of diamine silver ion and chloride ion so the formation of the clear solution on adding few drops of ammonia to the white precipitate of silver chloride confirms the presence of chloride ion so now let's move inside the test tube B and let's see what happens at the atomic level we are zooming in inside the test tube B and we can see here one molecule of sodium bromide and one molecule of silver nitrate as opposite charges attract each other so the silver and the bromide ion will get attracted towards each other and combine so let's see how this happens you can see here the silver ion and bromide ion are combining with each other and this results in the formation of very pale cream precipitate so what you saw uh, inside the test tube B at the surface level is the result of the formation of silver bromide so that means on adding few drops of silver nitrate solution to sodium bromide the formation of the very pale cream precipitate of silver bromide detects the presence of bromide ion now it's time for the confirmation test before proceeding further I would like to tell you that if to the precipitate of silver bromide we add few drops of ammonia so at that point the precipitate does not dissolve so this forms the basis to distinguish between uh, silver chloride and silver bromide in case of silver chloride on adding few drops of ammonia the precipitate got dissolved but in this case with silver bromide uh, on adding few drops of ammonia the precipitate remains it will not get dissolved so now what is the solution for that we will be adding few drops of concentrated ammonia solution and we'll see what happens so now let's add few drops of ammonia solution concentrated you can see here that we have added few drops of concentrated ammonia solution for the sake of simplicity I have just taken few molecules of concentrated ammonia so let's see now what happens oh you can see here that the silver ion has combined with the two molecules of concentrated ammonia to form a complex ion the name of this complex ion is diamine silver ion and here we are left with bromide ion as the silver ion has detached itself and it has combined with two molecules of concentrated ammonia this confirms that the very pale cream precipitate of silver bromide now no longer exists that means the precipitate has dissolved so this is what you can see at the atomic level what appears on the surface level for that we have to zoom out from the atomic level to see what appears inside the test tube B now but before zooming out I would like to write the equations for the identification as well as the confirmation test first of all identification test sodium bromide plus acidified silver nitrate solution gives silver bromide which is a very pale cream precipitate and sodium nitrate and if we add few drops of ammonia to this precipitate the precipitate does not dissolve but if we add few drops of concentrated ammonia to the, this precipitate it forms diamine silver ion which is a complex ion a soluble one and bromide ion so now let's zoom out to the surface level here I am zooming out and on the surface level we can see the clear solution 
of diamine, silver ion and bromide ion. So that means the formation of clear solution of diamine, silver ion and bromide ion on adding few drops of concentrated ammonia to the very pelcrim precipitate of silver bromide confirms the presence of bromide ion in the test tube B. Now let's zoom into the atomic level in test tube C. We are zooming in inside the test tube C and we can see one molecule of sodium iodide and one molecule of silver nitrate which on combining forms silver iodide which is a very pale yellow precipitate. This is what we saw inside the test tube C at the surface level. So uh, this has been resulted uh, from the formation of the silver iodide at the atomic level. So the formation of very pale yellow precipitate on adding few drops of acidified silver nitrate solution to sodium iodide detects the presence of iodide ion. Before proceeding further I would like to tell you that uh, if on this precipitate that is silver iodide we add few drops of ammonia then this precipitate will not dissolve. This is similar to what happened in case of silver bromide. So that means when we add our ammonia solution to silver bromide or to silver iodide, uh, nothing happens. The precipitate will not get dissolved. But in case of silver uh, bromide, we have seen that the precipitate got dissolved on adding concentrated ammonia. So we will see that if we add concentrated ammonia solution to this silver iodide, uh, what happens, what we get as the uh, final product. You can see here that we have added few drops of concentrated ammonia. So let's see what happens. Oh, you can see here that they have bounced back. So the bouncing back of the concentrated uh, ammonia molecules detects that uh, uh, nothing happened, no reaction took place between the concentrated ammonia molecules and silver iodide. So this confirms that uh, any amount of ammonia solution, whether uh, we are taking it normal uh, ammonia solution or concentrated ammonia solution, it has no effect on the silver iodide precipitate. This precipitate will remain intact. So this can be used to distinguish between silver bromide and silver iodide. With silver bromide, uh, we saw that on adding concentrated ammonia, this precipitate got dissolved to form the complex ion. Whereas in this case of silver iodide, uh, no reaction took place. So on the surface level, we will see the same very pale yellow precipitate of silver iodide. So before zooming out, I will write the equations for the reaction for the confirmation test as well as the identification test. First the identification. Sodium iodide plus acidified silver nitrate solution will give silver iodide precipitate and sodium nitrate. Second the confirmation test. To this silver iodide if we add few drops of ammonia the precipitate does not dissolve and if we add few drops of concentrated ammonia then also the precipitate does not dissolve. So now let's zoom out from the atomic level. Here I'm zooming out and we can see the same very pale yellow precipitate of silver iodide. So this was the whole procedure for the detection of the respective halide ion that is chloride ion, bromide ion and iodide ion. Thank you very much for shelling out time for watching this video. For more videos you can visit our website transelearning.com. Have a great day.